Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies. On this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I'm interviewing Teresa Lear Levine. She's a hypnotherapist and EFT, emotional freedom technique therapist. And oh my goodness, this gal, she's changed my life in many ways. And I've brought her back on the podcast. Now it's going to be three times. And this time we're going to tap together for you and really talk about aging, getting older, some of the resistance we have to getting older, and how you can use EFT tapping and hypnotherapy to help you move past those blocks, whether it be your physical, mental, or athletic performance, or just hot flashes in general, or anything that's coming up for you as you get older, this stuff really works. And so Teresa's become one of my really great pals, and gosh, we have a great conversation in this podcast. Let's reintroduce you to Teresa Lear-Levine. Speaking of energetics and energetic medicine and and homeopathy and all the fun things that I used to think were like batty as, you know, a Midwest girl, you know, just looking for something that could show me concrete evidence that it was going to work. I'm all in these days and especially after working with you. So one of the big things I wanted to kind of chat about today is the concept of really opening people up to the idea, maybe more than anything, that we can use our mind to help us with health issues. Because we think about it a lot of times of mind and helping us with mind issues, but health issues are just as connected to the mind issues. I'm betting you've seen that. Oh, definitely. And it's like, what else are we going to use to help ourselves if not our mind? Like every decision we make, whatever we're going to do to move in whatever direction we're going to go is going to process through what's between our two ears. So it's to me, like there's no better thing to work on. I don't know, but I'm, I've always been a huge proponent of like self-development, mind development, all of that kind of stuff. If I had money to invest in something, I'm going to invest it in me and invest it in making this all as, as good as I can make it. So, yeah, I mean, I think, I think it starts with like you said, opening up to it a little bit and then seeing what changes, you know, because nothing changes if nothing changes, you know, the same way that we say you don't know what you don't know until you know it. And it's so true. And it's so hard to see what could potentially be on the other side until you dip in a little bit and you start to notice how you show up a little bit differently in a situation or how you feel a little bit differently or how you make decisions with more clarity and confidence or a number of things you know i was just saying the other day about you know i was i was sharing some different things that were happening with some clients that i'm working with and none of the things that were happening although they were all positive were directly related to what they came to me to work on in the first place but it's when you start opening that door, all sorts of good things have the possibility to come in. It, it, it's interesting how, and, and I think this is what like a lot of people get hung up on because they'll listen to Joe Dispenza. They'll listen to Abraham Hicks, you know, these folks that you turn me on to. I mean, it, someone will listen to it and they'll be like, okay, these people are telling me I need to become a different person. Oh my God, I need to change my personality. How do I do this? But you do. <laughs> But, you know, to think about it, like at first when they're telling you this, that's like, oh, my God, how am I going to do this? And the older you are, you're like, oh, my goodness, how are you going to do this? But like you're saying, some of the techniques, you can use it to kind of get you there, right? Yeah. And I mean, you do it by falling in love with the process. Mm-hmm. You know, we live in a world where people want, you know, six pack abs. So they only look at like the outcome. Like they just want that. They just envy that body or that outcome. What we need to envy is the process of getting the six pack abs. We need to envy that commitment to showing up on a daily basis. We need to envy that commitment to eating better or, you know, not putting junk in our bodies. We need to envy the the actual exercise that needs to be done and the mental strength it takes to get from where you are now to that outcome instead of envying the outcome, which doesn't involve any of the process. And that's all work that gets done in the mind. Yeah. 
No, I, you know, when I first started this journey of of really exploring myself, I, I was like, okay, I want to be this person. You know, I had this vision of who I wanted to be. And I was like, just like fascinated with that person. And, and they'll tell us, you know, in a lot of trainings, like find that person, rehearse that person in your head. But the problem is, is that I wasn't enjoying the process because I was like, I I went to school, I do the work, right? And things happen. But this isn't happening. I'm doing the things, but it's not happening. And and really what I was looking at is like, I, I think I blocked a lot of my own progress at the beginning because I was so focused on outcome and not focused in the moment and the exploration of like, oh, look at me doing this. That's pretty cool. Or look at this thing happen. Do you find that that happens a lot with clients and, and maybe even yourself in your own practice? Oh, definitely. I mean, I can attest to myself 100% because <laughs> I know exactly what I've been through and I know what I continue to go through. I mean, it's it's cyclical, the kind of things that happen over and over again, but it's the way that we kind of like end up in the cycle differently that changes things. And I, I see it in my clients too. You know, um, self-doubt tends to creep in a lot of times when we're working on big things. Mm -hmm. And then, like you said, you start to notice what's not happening instead of the things that are happening. And that creates resistance. And it also creates that lack mindset or that scarcity mindset that, you know, what we focus on, we create. And it can be difficult, you know, when you're having like a really dire issue, whether it's, you know, a financial issue or a health issue or whatever, it's really hard to think that, you know, money is on the way or that I am healthy or whatever it is that you need to align with the vibration of. But just those little changes make a big difference, you know, and it it really does. It comes down to that that mental fortitude. I know. Um, are you familiar with Neville Goddard and his work at all? I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. Well, that's another well, one. Turn me on to new people. So, Tell um, me about this guy. But he talks a lot about living in the wish fulfilled and putting yourself into that vibration of it already being here. And the idea that, you know, we are the creators of time. You know, we, we have clocks on the wall and things. We always think that it's moving forward, mm -hmm. but really things are kind of all happening at the same time. Um, and when we can align with the vibration of what we want, then that's how we call it into our life. But uh, he also had this really interesting um, like 30 day challenge basically of, you know, putting yourself into that full confidence of whatever it is that you're working on and not allowing self-doubt or like complaining or whatever to come in for 30 days. And then if you if you miss a day or you falter, you start over again. And it really aligns you with becoming that version of you that you need to be to create the outcome that you want. And it's hard as heck. Um, I honestly, I haven't made it yet. <laughs> like, but in going back to the beginning over and over again, um, and I've probably like dinged myself for things that maybe didn't count or whatever, but you know, it's kind of like when people rate their nutrition and some people will like say it was a horrible day if they had like a bite of a cookie and other people are like, ah, just had a bite of a cookie. I'm still like 10 out of 10. So, you know, we're all hard on ourselves at different levels, but, um, yeah, it's a really interesting challenge to to think about, like just really leaning all in to that person that you want to be and having no doubt in what it is that you're trying to accomplish and then doing the things that are aligned with that so that you become who you need to become. And when I do that, I'm always using things like hypnotherapy and EFT tapping and <laughs> breath work and visualization and all sorts of things to try to stay in alignment throughout that process. And even though I can't say that I've successfully made it to the end of the 30 days at any point, I've made leaps and bounds in who I want to become. You know, it's kind of like when you, you know, shoot for the moon and you're still among the stars kind of thing. You know, it's like set, set the bar high and you're still going to make great progress. I think that's the thing, you know, like you said, you we're all in progress, right? Because I think if I listen to a lot of Abraham Hicks work, she'll always say like, you're not done. You're never done. You're always moving forward. And so that for me hits hit a big light in my head because I had this very black and white brain of I do the things, then I'm done. Then I sit back and chill, <laughs> you know, and then it all just magically, I don't know, happens. Um, And, and maybe we get that from school. You know, I I don't know. I was very 
you know, one plus one equals two. And, and, you know, I do the math, I get the things done. I turn in the work, I get the A, I move on. Right. And like box checked. But unfortunately, I think that a lot of us are kind of in that category of, I do all the things, I check the box and why have I not for rest? Why have I not moved forward? And you're kind of hinting at it right there because we're not, it's not over. It's a Mm -mm. progression. Yeah. It really makes a difference what you put your attention on. Yeah. You know, if you're putting your attention on all the things that aren't happening, you're going to get more of things not happening. <laughs> if you start putting your attention on all the things that, you know, are going right or are going in the direction that you want to happen, then you get more of that, you know, but sometimes those things feel really small when you want them to be big, giant leaps. And Sometimes, you know, when things do get in alignment, those big leaps start to happen. But I think, you know, it comes out of faith and things like that, too. And, you know, that may be a little bit woo for, for some people. But I think when, we, when you believe in something that's bigger than you and you believe that, you know, this universe is here working in our favor, whether you want to call it the universe or God or whatever you want to call it, then you have something bigger to align with that, you know, has your best interests at heart. And that when you put your faith in that and lean into it, it, it gives you back what you ask it for. It's just some of us are not asking the right questions or doing a very good job of aligning. Well, and, and here's the thing, like you mentioned the word faith and, and for some people, you know, all in for me, it was the thing that got me at the principal's office every week in Catholic grade school, because the, the teacher would say, you just have to have faith. Marm goes up, what's faith? No one can explain that to you. Now I realize that back then I would keep questioning, well, how do you want me to have faith in something that I can't see? I can't touch. I can't feel. It's not like this desk, you know? And like literally I would get to the principal's office regularly. Like the principal would be like, oh, you're back again. I'm like, yeah, can we have a talk? Like I wanted to have these deep philosophical talks with these folks, but no one wanted to go there with me. And I don't know if it's just their training or whatever. But now that I look back on it, I'm like, I tested these boundaries to be like, if I believe in, if I believe that this is going to happen, what would happen next? So you're playing with it. So anyway, going forward into the work that, that you're doing, and, and energy work and starting to think a certain way and going, I'm going to see if I can think and have faith in the fact that this day is going to go well. And you know how I tested it first? Email. Email. I used to tell myself email, like email is going to like swallow me, right? It's like, I just get so many emails. I get so frustrated. Oh, I remember when you were working on this. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. I, like I get bajillion emails in a day. And like, I was telling people to email me and troubleshoot because I like that. Like, I do like that. But, but you hated going into your email inbox. Right. I would, I would literally shake going to open my email and I would put it off and put it off. And then, and I, and I literally created this whole like vortex of drama around my email. And so anyway, one day I decided I'm going to play with it. Right. And it was probably after one of our conversations, I was like, email's going to be easy. Nobody's going to email me today. Oh my God, it worked. So then I was like, you know, kept thinking like playing like that. And so little things of like telling myself this is going to happen today or this day is going to go amazing. It's going to be so easy. Everybody's going to be nice to me. I do that at the airport often. I'll be like, I'm going to breeze through tra like TSA. It's going to, mm -hmm. you know, my, the line for, for the people that do the pre-check is not going to be longer than the other line. It's going to be so easy. It's going to be beautiful. Yeah. And, and it will. It will. Yeah. So you start to learn like what it feels like to have that like total confidence and total belief versus that like little bit of wiggly self-doubt in the back of your head or whatever. And you start to kind of get an idea of those vibrations. And when you start to play with things that are a little like that, like just, oh, I'm going to breeze through the TSA line or whatever, and you see it happening, then you can start playing with like the bigger things. Because I, I know, um, gosh, it was, whose book was it? Jennifer Weigel, I think, had a book about... I'm gonna have to look it up while we're talking, but she told this story about how she manifested a parking spot in like downtown Chicago, like right where she needed it, like every day for like over like I, I don't remember the story exactly. I'm probably misquoting it, but it, like it was a long period of time, like over 100 days or so. And at some point, I think she had the realization, as I did too, when I was doing this, and many of my clients have, of like, why am I not asking for something bigger? 
you know, like <laughs> when it, if we're going to talk about faith, we're going to talk about, you know, the universe or God or whatever or miracles and, you know, what you ask for, like God or the universe doesn't care if you ask for a big thing or a little thing, it's, right. it's going to answer and, and if you're in alignment with it. So, you know, we can all stop playing small and we can all start asking for much bigger things. You don't need anybody's permission for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, I mean, testing the waters for me was just a little bit of that. Oh my God, this faith thing is real. Um, <laughs> You know, it's crazy. You got it depending on where your mindset is at. And I know like a lot of people, you know, might be similar to me in terms of being like, oh, faith, you know, <laughs> or, or let's say religious trauma. You know, I, I had to go to I had to I, I was gifted the beautiful um, ability to go to a very great Catholic grade schools where it was small classes. I could learn really well and ask a lot of questions. And granted, minus the time I spent at the principal's office, I did learn stuff. <laughs> But, but the truth is, is that, you know, I think, I think a lot of people are like this, like you said, you know, we're, we're just kind of dabbling, but why are we not asking for more? And that was where I met you. And in, in the scheme of things of really, like, fully needing someone to help me in that, in that process, but also in the process of learning how to ask more, how to overcome the crap that gets in your way and and i'd love to talk a little bit about hypnosis and eft for helping us move through the crap that gets in the way because that's really where i d dive into it wholeheartedly to to move yeah through. we all we all have ways that we get in our own way you know and some of it's like daily basis stuff and some of it's just these really much larger blocks and I love using hypnotherapy and EFT together because for me, I feel like, you know, EFT is my main modality that I use for nervous system regulation, even though it does have some subconscious mind benefits also. And then hypnotherapy is the main modality that I use for subconscious mind work, even though it also has some nervous system regulation qualities. So they both kind of do similar things, but I feel like one's more powerful than the other in, in those areas. And when it comes to getting out of our own way, if we're not feeling regulated, you know, that's what keeps us from feeling grounded. And when we're not feeling grounded, then we're not having that self trust. We're not having that connection with our in intuition, our gut. And it makes it a lot harder to make good decisions. It also makes it harder to be rational, logical, all of those things. And I also feel like it makes it harder to have a different perspective or reframe on things also. So when you have tools like this, you kind of get to see things in a different way. I always feel like it's kind of like rising up above whatever's happening and being able to see the whole picture when you kind of get regulated around something. And it's like, gosh, I never thought of it that way. And, you know, in hypnosis, you make all these connections. You know, and the way that I like to do hypnotherapy, my my client is talking through a lot of it, you know, revisiting things, regressing, kind of like connecting dots. But I'm always making sure that, you know, it's the client that's doing that, not me being like, well, here's how I see it. You know, this happened to you when you were seven and now you, you know, can't get on stage and do public speaking. Like, I'm not going to put that together for you. It's so much more powerful when it's first of all, that you've dropped into the subconscious mind and you're not doing it with the conscious mind anymore. And you're making the connections yourself. And then we kind of create that transformation of that brand new day that you want to step into. And then we can rewire it into a brain that's been primed. And, you know, we have a good foundation to plant that in, you know, it's a lot the same with doing emotional freedom techniques, we want to kind of clear out the crud, get all the junk and the baggage out of the way, and then we can implant positive things that otherwise might feel really fake or misaligned or like they just kind of want to bounce off of you and you don't want to accept them. You know, those, <laughs> they say it's kind of like, it's like too big of a leap to make to like say certain things about yourself or to believe certain things about your life or whatever. And that's when you know there's like something that you need to do to get out of your own way so that you can realize that you are worthy and that you're able and that it's all in you already. You know, everything that we need to have the life that we really want and dream about and desire, it's already in in here sometimes it's just a matter of like pulling the right thread and getting it to to come out and shine in the right way and we get in our own way about that oh my gosh yeah we do yeah we do I mean I feel like that was you know I, and I think this is something important for folks to hear is like the better you get at doing EFT the better you get at doing some hypnosis and working on on the mindset side of things the less 
the things get in your way or the more you can catch them when you're starting to go down that wiring process and you're like, oh, I'm doing that again. And then I'm like, I always like to say the better it gets, the better it gets to be. Yeah. So, and we always have layers, you know, I still get in my own way. Still, now it's like I can move through it so much faster. You know, I shared a story in my book that came out last November about, you know, my husband and I had this kind of like rifty kind of thing that happened last summer that if that had happened in our relationship and in our marriage 10 years ago, it would have been, who knows how long it would have taken us to to walk through it or to, you know, make things right and, and good again. But with all of the work that I've been doing, it was like a week. And we sped through things and we were back to like an even more connected and like intimate place in our marriage than we had been a week before. And those are the kind of leaps and bounds that I love doing this work for, because it's like, why do we, we don't need to take forever to make things feel better or to enjoy our lives better. Things can happen so quickly when we align with the outcome that we want to have. It makes sense. It makes sense. And really, you know, as I'm, moving into understanding health and wellness at a whole, like, and and really truly understanding, because I mean, I'm a naturopath, right? We were taught like mind, body, soul, all connected. But like, honestly, did I really get that when I graduated school? No. And like, did I get how acupuncture can move energy and all that? Yes. And like, it's funny that as time goes on, you like divert from it when you start to get into the conventional medicine model of things you like get brainwashed by that and then you're like I I totally got away from what I learned in school and here we are but you know one of the things that I think for a lot of people is looking at wellness as as a whole and and people are biohacking they're doing all these things right to be able to to feel better but I feel like why are the bio top biohackers not focusing as much on the mindset stuff like we've got the different you know like the muse and the focus calm and the gadgets but what about the foundational work i feel like there's just not as much conversation about that do you or do or is it maybe i'm just not listening to the people that don't talk about it i mean i guess there's people out there that do and there's people that don't um I don't know. All I could really do is speculate and wonder, like, are the people that aren't talking about it, are they just using gadgets and like trying to kind of like regulate from the outside in? Or, I mean, there's there's a function and there's ability to make progress in all different ways. I just like, I, I prefer the whole pr- approach, you know, that holistic whole approach. But not everybody does, you know, and not everybody wants to actually face all their stuff or get deep in there or whatever. Some people would rather just like have something that like vibrates their wrist and like and send some pulses through and hopefully they feel a little bit better or whatever, you know, or whatever the, the gadget might be. And sure, there's you can make some progress that way. Like I don't ever like to discount anything, but yeah, I mean, not everybody's looking at the, the whole picture. And, you know, I mean, no disrespect to anybody who who's not going there. It's just more like I, I question like in my head, I have lots of questions now that I've started to think about health and wellness and what it truly means. And is it is it the possibility that we have that, you know, yes, all these gadgets are nice and helpful on on certain levels. And, and really what I believe is that we we need to create our own pattern of what helps us right we need to find what works and and work on it that way but i'm wondering like just in the deep core of human design if we really do have at the highest capability our power to use the mind to heal the mind to you know create neurochemicals all the things that that either Joe Dispenza and all these guys are talking about, or even the book Molecules of Emotion. It's, yeah. it's, you know, it's starting to think in my mind, I'm starting to be like, can, can we achieve health or ultimate health without diving a little into this or having some practice? Yeah. I mean, I often wonder like, what if we just strip it all out? We don't use any gadgets. We don't take any supplements. We just like strip it all out and like see what's there after that. Um, it's, you know, none of that stuff could be created. None of those gadgets, none of those supplements, none of those extras or whatever could be created without the mind. So, you know, a a thought 
kind of in, in that substance in the universe becomes the thing. So when we learn how to condition the mind, then we can create really great things through just our thoughts, you know, and that's kind of the whole principle behind being able to do less and be more. Um, you know, now I am the first person to say that I'm a supplement geek and a tech nerd and I love all of those things. But, you know, I think it's just more of like a fun and convenience thing. I think at the end of the day, if I really had to make do with something, I it would just be me. Like <laughs> that would just be like all I really need is that. And I can figure out and pioneer a lot of things from that space. But, you know, and I think there's a lot of bias or predeterminations about like what therapy is or what this kind of work can look like or you know based on what people have experienced previously and I don't know I mean I feel like I work with a lot of people who are experts in different fields and still get in their own way get stuck have this resistance and you know need help getting out of their own way just like I do and that's where I love doing this work is you know, to really kind of meet people where they are and take them through to wherever it is that they want to be. But I think that, you know, resistance is a big part of, you know, kind of like what you were talking about, about people, you know, whether they use their mind or whether they kind of go to external things. And I think a lot of that comes down to resistance. um, And that's something that we all get and need ways to work through. And I feel like nervous system regulation and the subconscious mind are great ways to get through resistance. Um, you know, again, whether it's that kind of daily resistance to things or a bigger thing where we're really just trying to keep ourselves safe, you know, we're trying to revert to what we're already familiar with, what we're already comfortable with. But from that space, we can't get anywhere but where we are. So we have to find ways, and this is why I love using hypnotherapy, because we can make the unfamiliar familiar. We can make the unfamiliar feel safe before it's actually part of our life. And that really helps to bound resistance. And then we can use things like EFT tapping to really talk about that resistance, all those things you don't want to do or all that other stuff and just kind of like let it out there and vent it and allow that resistance, that stuck energy in your body to move so that all of a sudden you start opening up to whatever the thing is and thinking, hmm, kind of like the email inbox. Maybe it doesn't have to be difficult. Maybe there's not going to be some, you know, awful message waiting for me. Maybe my inbox is just going to be full of like awesome clients that want to work with me. And that's like all those hundreds and hundreds of messages. And then I'll love sorting through that, you know, instead of, you know, whatever crazy stuff might have been there before. (laughs) It's true. It's true. You know, the, the resistance is such, such a factor and, and, you know, in my world of trying to build and, and helping people to to open their eyes up to what they can build for their health and wellness, I do see like tapping as being, and, and hypnosis too, but, but tapping for me has been the great on the fly, like I move energy fast. Yeah. And, and one of the things I think a lot of people don't understand is like resistance is stuck. You're stuck. You're like paralyzed almost, you know, even if you're like anxious and you're frozen and you're not moving that stuckness is is what we need like some people go for runs right and they can think it through Mm -hmm. and and work it out then but others who maybe aren't so into (laughs) into fitness or or running and and or maybe the run just couldn't do it that day or you already ran (laughs) and something came up I mean yeah I start every day with exercise but I still need something to get the energy moving throughout the day also (laughs) Right, right. Like you, you got to jump in and be like, even though, you know, and, and for me, the way, you know, you taught me with the EFT, it's really helped me on the fly. Like when I get worked up or when I'm starting to loop on something that I'm like, oh, this is an old pattern. It's, it's been so incredible to turn things around in just a matter of minutes. And I think a lot of folks think that with EFT, they have to be in like a Zen space. They have to get to a space that's chill. I mean, I don't know how many times I've done EFT in the bathroom, you know, at work. I don't know how many times I've done EFT in front of my kids when I'm about to lose it and scream at them all. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Because I think for a lot of parents, this is this is one of their like factors where like, I can't get stuff done because my kids keep coming up and doing Thanks. Uh, yeah. How's it work as a mom? Because I don't know. 
Yeah. And, and it led me to everything else, honestly. Like when I first found EFT and decided to get my master practitioner certification, um, I, my kids were all, gosh, how old were my kids? They were all under the age of 13. I have four boys. Um, and the youngest one was only like a couple years old at that point. And I was running a business from home and raising the kids and finding my patients really like thin a lot of times and showing up as like the, the snippy, angry, yell at you mom more than I would like to. Um, because I wanted to like protect my little bit of space to get something done, you know, for whatever that's worth. So silly, honestly, in retrospect, um, to think, you know, how irritated I could be by all the blessings that were around me, but it, it happens, you know? And that was one of the first things that when I started like learning it, I was like, oh, I could actually start showing up differently as a mom. And then that ripple effect kind of starts to happen, you know, so that's what I started using it on personally, probably the most at first, um, my own kind of just like frustration, anger, resistance, that feeling of like, oh, there's nothing just that's just for me. You know, everything is is shared or interrupted. I never have time. I like all those like thoughts, those lack thoughts that would kind of circle through my head during those years. And then from there, kind of as that started to, you know, be better, and I still use it for that. Like I, I can still find myself in that place. It's not the same place that it was then, but it's like a different version of that place where I'm like, ooh, like need to need to chill. But I, I can reset so much faster and get to a much better place. And um, then it's like, ooh, if I could use it on this, then I can, you know, use it in this part of my business. I can use it to rewire some money mindset stuff. I can use it to improve my marriage. Hey, I twisted my ankle. I can use it to make my ankle feel better. Like all the things, because there's literally nothing that you can't touch with this. Because anything that you can feel, anything that you want to feel, uh, whatever you're looking to create or manifest or habits that you're looking to break, it's all on the table with these methods. So, you know, whenever anything's not going my way, I look to these methods of like, how can I, you know, rewire the, the the neural connections in my brain how can i reprogram something how can i alleviate the emo like uh, move the emotions that are stuck in my body and elevate my vibration so that i can more easily align with what it is that i want instead of what it is that i don't want hey health junkies if you're struggling with getting older the concept of it maybe the aches the pains the belly fat maybe it's even just the fatigue whatever it may be Teresa can help you she's an amazing practitioner who helps women and men regulate their nervous system and rewire their subconscious minds so that you can show up differently in your life finally end those harmful cycles of just repeat of trouble and irritation and frustration and really cultivate a calm, clear mind and focus. Who doesn't need a little more focus this day and age? So you can join her free community or even book a call with her to learn more. And she's currently enrolling folks right now for her Becoming More Me program. And if you enroll and tell her that I sent you, she will hook you up with an extra month of free coaching calls, one-on-one -on -one support that's valued at over $1,000. So just mention my name when you reach out for more information and she'll hook you up with a free insight call chock full of recommendations, no strings attached, nothing to lose. She's here to help just like me. We want folks to age well and feel comfortable in their bodies and just love life. So check Teresa out. Let's get on with the podcast. You can connect with Teresa at GameChangingConversation.com or head over to TeresaLearLevine.com. That's Teresa, T-H-E-R-E-S-A, Lear, L-E-A-R, Levine, L-E-V-I-N-E.com. And don't forget, everything will be in my podcast notes at DrJKrausND.com under episode 445. Let's get on with the podcast. This beautiful. I mean, I, I think like a lot of people never really i know i didn't before i started looking into this never really thought like i'm you know i would get so angry and so worked up i would i wouldn't think to the point of like oh i can clear this energy right now my thought would have been like i can go have acupuncture eventually when i get done with all my patients and sure. then i can put some needles in and then i could clear but it was like not in the moment like 
I could clear this right now and move on and the rest of the day could be better. And I, I think for a lot of moms, especially older moms who are going into menopause, perimenopausal states, like now we have hormones shifting and the kids. I can see how this could be like a really big. Those, peri those perimenopause mood swings are like no freaking joke. Like <laughs> I, I still haven't quite found the answer there, but it definitely helps to have these tools and some certain supplements and things in my pocket because I, I can pinpoint when it's going to happen or as soon as it happens, I'm like, oh, that's not normal me. That's like, you know, either before or after my cycle me that like shows up for like 48 hours or so on either end and like you don't want to get in her way. But you know, it's we need tools to deal with stuff like that because the only thing that's constant in this world is change. And especially when you're a woman in midlife, that change just, it just keeps coming and you got to find ways to cope with it and, and, and deal with it. Oh gosh. Yeah. It's so funny. Like it's like a switch. And, and I tell my patients, it's kind of like that, that switch will just turn on. You're like, someone just hijacked me for a minute. And then you're like, yep. how many people do I have to apologize to now? <laughs> What have I done? It's mostly my husband that gets the brunt of it. Poor guy. I mean, I'll just be like fine for a minute. And then I'll just be like something snippy. And he looks at me like, okay. <laughs> Let me tap. I'm going to tap on that. <laughs> um, You know, these kind of things. I, I know so many women that that's like their biggest fear, you know, especially professional women, women that have to speak in front of, you know, lawyers, right? You know, they're going into court and they're like, stop these hot flashes you know and they're like i don't want to sit there dabbing my face while i'm defending a client and i'm sweating <laughs> like this is just not not cool and so i've worked with some folks kind of you know showing some of your principles but really you and i were talking about it a little bit and trying to to use the eft trying to use a little bit maybe even hypnosis to work on on hot flashes at this point in time, I know you said like sometimes it works, sometimes it not, it doesn't. And, and folks, this is just stuff you got to try. What is what has been the most successful for you to kind of get out of a hot flash loop? And two two part question: And do you feel like hot flashes are a shift in like an emotion? I'm, I'm super curious on your thought on that, or like shift in like energy that you feel in the body because of the hormones, or because of just something happened and it was a there was a trigger for it. So I think that. If I'm talking about mine particularly, it's yeah. interesting because I do think there's a shift in energy because I'll notice a lot of times, especially if I'm having one at night, it's right after I've like woken up and it's right after my brain kind of switches from dream mode or that trance state of sleep into thinking thoughts about like the day to come or just life in general or whatever. And then it's like, whew hot <laughs> like so i can tell that there's like a shift in my my brain energy and my thoughts and then all of a sudden it's there i rarely wake up in a dream having a hot flash it's like it's like almost like that transition from from sleep into wakefulness um but i think there's a lot of resistance sometimes i think it's another resistance thing where you know it's this new thing for us and we're going through this thing and oh, don't want to have hot flashes we don't want to really like go through this perimenopause or this menopause thing i don't know a whole lot of women that are like bring it on you know and Except like i can't wait stopping. well yeah <laughs> sure but it's like, like i can't wait for those hot flashes or you know for hormonal imbalances or chin hair or whatever the heck's gonna <laughs> pop up so <laughs> acne um <laughs> lower different sex drive whatever the case may be like most of those things are not things that we're excited about therefore there's some resistance about welcoming that stage of our life so i think when we can find things that are awesome about where we are right now and what's happening and you know it, it, in my case as a mom with my kids i can be like i feel really thankful for everything i've gotten to experience with this body and everything that i have still yet to experience and you know just thankful for and grateful for all the things that this body does to me on a daily basis and also knowing that this is part of that this is part of what this body is intended to do um and that i have some control over how it's all going to turn out and you know i can take control of what i can control and i can let go of the rest and kind of hand it over to that higher power in faith and trust and belief that things are happening for my highest good and that can be really helpful to release some of that resistance. And I forget what the other part of your question was. Do you remember? 
It was, it was more just like, what were you doing? You know, how are we doing it? Like, we I also think- forget when we're going through perimenopause what we're mm-hmm. talking about. And then there's ADHD and all those other things. So, you know, but I think that's probably the best answer I can give you. It's good. It's good. No, I, I think, you know, really <laughs> memory is a fun one. Um, That's why I love mushrooms, not the tripping kind, which I keep having to tell people because everyone looks at me like, no, focus mushrooms. They do help. Um. And, and one of the things that I would be thinking about now is like, maybe we could, maybe we could tap together and, and give people a little bit of like sense of something with resistance. Cause I think resistance is a lot of what brings us into having different, you know, symptoms, things of that nature, especially like hot flash, heart palpitation, chest pain, all the things that make a lady think like, oh my God, I'm having the big one. Like go to the ER, let's. Let's save some people from going to the ER. (laughs) Oh, for sure. For sure. So do you want to tap on like the resistance to kind of entering this stage in life? Yeah. Let's, or, or, or we could do like, just, yeah, just getting older. Like that way, that way guys can do this too, because I know that there are guys out there that experience similar things to us. Like they'll have the chest pain, they'll have the anxiety and they'll be like, oh my God, I'm having a heart attack. You know, and and I think it is a thing that as we get older, it happens as the hormones are shifting. Guys, girls, doesn't matter. Whole thing. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. All right. So I always like to start a tapping round with kind of thinking about the focus is. So mm-hmm. we're focusing on kind of resistance to this next stage of life, whatever it is that we're moving into and um, finding some acceptance around that. So if you're thinking about... um let's see let's gather do you have do you have some things that you're resistant to about this this part of life yeah yeah it's good really? to gather some things and whoever's listening think about it for yourself and like janine's going to share some things and then you, you maybe you want to write your own down if you're doing this along so that you can kind of personalize what we're going to tap on for yourself um but what would you say either personally for you or that you hear a lot yeah resistance for me is is my mind and my concentration and focus that's a big one for me being able to keep my creative mind but also to be able to remember stuff on patients because that's Mm -hmm. embarrassing when i goof up stuff there um that one's huge the other one for not so much for me but i i i feel it sometimes happening i don't have intense hot flashes but i will have flushes where my cheeks will get red out of nowhere and it's been happening actually i got them right i got it going right now I got my cheeks. Um, and then sometimes they'll get bigger, like it'll get bigger. And, but I don't have the whole pot. So that, and then, and it's usually when I'm like excited and, and doing things. So, so there's that. And, and I don't know what the resistance is there. Cause I like doing what I'm doing right now, but who knows? Um, and then, the, then the last one, I think that's really probably most important for, for me is, is the resistance to, getting older in general the concept of like oh my god what's gonna happen you know just that whole like thing and and i want to like the unknown yeah the unknown yeah all right um so what we're gonna do it's like follow the leader i'm gonna i'm gonna tap um and i'm assuming is this only gonna be audio or are you gonna share video nope we're doing video too perfect because you're gonna need to see what i'm doing so just I don't even need to explain where I'm going to go because you'll just be watching. Although when I get lower, I'm tapping under the arm um, when I tap down here in case you can't see me. Uh, Everything else, I'll make sure it's on camera so that you can see what my hands are doing. The common question I always get asked is, does it matter which hand? No. Um, In fact, there's some points like our eyebrows and the side of our eye, under our eye, um, where you can easily do two hands and you can do both sides if you want, or you can do either or. So you can't mess it up is honestly like really what it comes down to it, (laughs) you know, uh, you can't mess it up. So just follow me and think about what it is that you are personally resisting about aging or hormone changes, perimenopause, menopause, just getting older. And feel free to personalize some of the things that I'm going to say as we do this to fit you better if what I'm saying doesn't align. That's the best advice I can give you because when we have energetic blockages of which resistance is one, it favors specificity. What we're doing when we tap these different points and talk about it is we're unblocking the energy when what we're saying matches the block that's at that point. So if what we say doesn't align, the block stays. Mm -hmm. So just make sure that what you're saying is in alignment. That's all. 
and um and you can do the same because you'll be muted so you can say whatever you want <laughs> <laughs> i I'll, I'll leave it open i said you're muted i'll leave it open then you guys can hear what i'm saying and and i because i will riff on teresa sometimes and and say what i want to say so i think that oh, actually is a good idea because remember from before yeah. i would just say some <laughs> throw in things. i always encourage my clients to change things i am you know <laughs> <laughs> I I'll, I'll leave it open. I said Yamita. I'll leave it open. Then you guys can hear what I'm saying. And and I because I will riff on Teresa sometimes and and say what I want to say. So I think oh, that perfect. actually is a good idea because remember from before I yeah. would just say some <laughs> throw in things. I always encourage my clients to change things. I am you know while I've been told that I'm a channel and I'm very intuitive about what I can sense from people, I get it wrong. So you know I don't. I, there's nothing that means I can get it 100 percent right. So right. I, I count on my clients to kind of guide that and make it right for them. All right. So now we just need to rate the intensity of that resistance. Ooh. Zero being none, and ten being the most resistance that you could possibly have. I'm going. Um, with the, I'm going with the seven today. I'm going with the seven. Yeah. Let's go with that. I'm really resistant to that. <laughs> All right. Even though I have a lot of resistance to aging. Even though I have a lot of resistance to aging. I want to love, accept, and forgive myself. I want to love, accept, and forgive myself. Even though I can't find a whole lot to love about going through perimenopause and menopause. Even though there are not a lot of things to love about the side effects of perimenopause and menopause. I'm open to the idea that I can find something to embrace about this part of my life. I'm open to the idea that I can find something to embrace about this part of my life. And even though I have a lot of resistance to growing older, even though I have a lot of resistance to growing older, it kind of freaks me out. Because there's so much uncertainty. There's so much uncertainty. Am I going to become what on earth happens next? <laughs> what happens next? Can I get a preview? Can I get a preview? Yes, please. I honor these feelings and accept myself anyway. I honor these feelings and accept myself anyway. Now we're going to start going through the main tapping points. All this resistance to aging. All this resistance to aging. Part of me just wants to stay young. Part of me wants to stay young forever. And it bums me out that I can't. And it bums me out that I can't. I see lots of examples of what poor aging looks like. I see lots of examples of what poor aging looks like. And I do not want that to be me. That is not going to be my jam. I don't want that. And for some of you, maybe even I see lots of examples in my own family of what I don't want to become. Absolutely. I do not want to become my mother, loved her, but I don't want to become what happened for her. Yeah. And I'm afraid that I am predetermined to have that happen to me also. I'm afraid my genetics are wired for me to happen that have that happen. All this resistance to this part of my life in this body. All this resistance to this part of my life in this body. Just feeling like there's more that I wanted to do when I was younger. Just feeling like there's a lot of shit I didn't do when I was younger. Maybe having some regrets. Lots of regrets. All this resistance to hot flashes and chin hairs. All this resistance to hot flashes and yes, chin hairs. Oh, acne and gray hairs. Acne, gray hairs. Changes in libido. Changes in libido. Belly fat. Changes in energy. Changes in energy. Changes in the strength of my bones. Changes bone strength changes in my sleep at night changes in my sleep at night i don't like any of it i don't like any of it can i get a refund 
I get a refund. Can I get a do-over? Do-overs, yes. Yes, please. So resistant. So resistant. <sighs> Sometimes you might even feel the urge to yawn or take a deep breath. Just honor that. That is energy moving. <sighs> Open to the idea that maybe this is just where I'm supposed to be right now. Open to the idea that this is where I am supposed to be right now. I am certainly not the first woman to ever age. Not the first woman to do this. No, nope. nope. True. And I can also see examples of so many people who have aged amazingly well. There are lots of examples of women who have aged really well. Yes. Yes, there are. And even though I may have some beliefs about my own genetics. Even though I might have some beliefs about my own genetics. The study of epigenetics is showing me so many ways that I can change the way my genes express. The study of epigenetics is changing the way I see how I can express my genes. Yes, that's true. I may have a little bit more control than I realize. I may have more control than I realize. And aging is certainly better than the alternative. I like getting older better than being dead. So yes, <laughs> good idea. That's good. I like that. I like that. Oh, yeah. So I'm open to the idea of doing it as well as I can. I'm open to the idea of doing as well as I can. Good challenge. Yeah. There's things I can do to make it better. There's things I can do to make it better. Yeah. Changing my mindset changing my mindset reprogramming some of my subconscious beliefs reprogramming my subconscious beliefs getting some good exercise oh yeah getting the good exercise yes staying hydrated staying hydrated researching and acting on ways to make holistic changes researching and acting on ways to make holistic changes I could be a beacon for others who are aging also. Be a beacon for others who are aging also. Mm -hmm. I could be a great example of how this can go really well. It could be a great example of how this could go well. And I look forward to living a long, healthy life. I look forward to living a long, healthy life. So I want to make it as enjoyable as possible. I'm going to make it as enjoyable as possible. Because the only way to move is forward. I'm moving forward. That is the only way to go. And things are going to keep changing whether I change with them or not. Things are going to change whether, yeah, I change with it or not. I don't want to, I got some FOMO. I'm moving forward. So I'm open to the idea of changing. I'm open to the idea of changing. Becoming that 10.0 version of myself. 10.0. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Take a nice deep inhale through the nose. Stretch, shake, whatever feels good. Mm -hmm. I always like to ask, like, what were you thinking while we were doing that? What was coming up for you? I was like a cheerleader in my head there going like, yeah, yeah, I got this. I got this. Yeah. We, can, we can have some fun with this. And how does that resistant energy feel now? Where is it at on that scale of zero to 10? We've moved it down quite a bit. I'd say I'm probably like at a two or two and a half. Let's go with the two and a half. It's a big move. Yeah. Move. I mean, we just, it was a few minutes. So, you know, this is always like where, and you know this, because we've done lots of work together. We kind of determine well, what's left, like what makes up that two and a half? What do we still need to work on? And, you know, one of the things that we haven't really talked about um, that feeds into all the things that we have talked about is our past. Yeah. So a lot of times we can 
what we just did is a great like band-aid for the present moment things that are happening but there's likely something below that resistance that stems from programming that you received from your mom or dad when you were younger or you know everything that you went through when your mom passed or whatever else you know and for everybody that's listening and tapping along you have your own things that contributed to the feelings or the resistance that you have and that is where we really need to kind of revisit those things i love doing inner child work with EFT or hypnosis or regressive hypnosis so that you could actually like go into a whole hypnosis session looking for why you're resistant to aging and letting the subconscious instead of the conscious brain bring to the table those reasons because consciously we can say you know we're resistant because of those symptoms or because of what happened to a loved one or because of what we've seen but subconsciously you're going to bring totally different ideas to the table that are going to connect the dots for you in a whole other way and then you can rewire that. So there's all these different ways to kind of move from whatever version you are now up, up, up to that 10.0 version and always be striving for that next level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. While appreciating where you are with <laughs> gratitude. <laughs> I would say you can't, you can't always just be looking for what's next. You have to be really grounded and appreciative and grateful for where you are while also reaching for that next thing. Oh, that's huge. That's huge. Because yeah, you know, right now, I would say my biggest resistance and you hit on it was the regret, like things I hadn't done by now, right? Things that I missed out on, you know, because of mindset stuff, you know, but sure. being grateful that like, I see it now, I see it, and I can work with it now. And who cares that now I'm in my 40s, and I'm going to do some of those things that I should have done in my 20s. Eh. And I sure. said, should have. Mm, I showed it on myself. <laughs> uh, we we showed it on ourselves from time to time. Uh, we can just clean it up and move on. <laughs> moving forward, moving forward. That was awesome. And so those of you guys who are listening, you could hear me kind of ad libbing a little bit. I decided to ad lib in at the last because actually I do think it's important to put in your own personal thing. Plus, for me, I'm I'm a person who likes to laugh, and and for me, laughing moves me. It's an energetic shift for me. And so making a little light of of the situation and kind of just feeling things that way can help, you know? And, and sometimes like we've talked about, I've angry EFT tapped before when I'm like, I'm so angry, you know, and, and any way that you guys can tailor it to yourself. And I'm sure Teresa can, has seen many different versions of people doing things. Absolutely. And I love it. I mean, I learned so much from my clients and the way that they interpret this and use it when they're willing to step into that space and embody whoever they need to be in that moment to move the energy and be able to guide that. And yeah, I mean, we got to angry energy, especially is important to move. And I think as women, we've been taught to kind of sh push that down, suppress it, it becomes all sorts of things, not just suppressed anger, it becomes, you know, health issues and a, a lot of a lot of stuff. And that usually definitely stems from things that happened earlier in our life or ways that we were taught to express or not express our feelings. And that can be huge when we're talking about our health and the way, you know, that things are showing up there wholeheartedly I almost like and and this is my personal opinion guys and, and it's just from the experience of what I experienced with my mom and and my aunts and a lot of anger within our family um for different things that happened over the years and my mom and aunt both died of breast well my mom had breast cancer and then died of multiple mets within her body metastases but my my aunt had breast cancer when she was in her 30s then had it back into her colon and it, and and it's very fascinating to me how cancer kind of yes there's a genetic but i think when you look at personalities holding anger holding resentment holding these things and this is why i'm so into like let's get this out of here out of it gone because I, I see so many patients in my practice who are like, oh my God, my mom had cancer, my aunt had cancer, you know, just like my story. And they're like, I'm terrified. I feel like I'm going to get it. And it's like, it almost just happens, you know? And I watch it and I'm like, oh my God, we got to get your energy. So if nothing else, that's for sure. clear some things. So Teresa, of course, we went down a whole bunch of, of pathways and, and in the and for the sake of of folks understanding how they can work with you, what kind of things they could do, especially in this transition in life, getting older and really being able to move through all of the, the blockages that we have, what would be the best way for folks to get started with you? Would it be 
read your book because we didn't even go there today. We're, we're, we did a whole other episode on that though. So check yeah, out whatever true. episode that was. True. We'll, we'll get, I'll, I'll link that for you guys in the podcast notes at drjcrossnd.com. But tell us how folks can start working with you. What would be the best way to just, if, if someone's listening to this and they're, they're like, this is interesting. I think I could, I think I could try this. I want to see if it's for me. What's the best way for them to, to connect with you? Look at your private sessions. What do you think? What do you think? Oh, there's, there's so many ways. So, yeah. I mean, I have a whole free community on a platform called school where I do free coaching every week. I have over $10,000 worth of resources. I'll make sure you have the link for that. Um, and my private sessions, sessions.com um and janine and i have done two different sessions in there um and then you have this one that we did today and there's nearly 70 sessions in that right now so it's a very high value resource if you want to do tapping um and then yeah my, my book becoming more me tapping into success subconscious secrets of an adhd entrepreneurial mom is available on amazon that has a lot of exercises and things that you can get hands on in it and it's also a lot of my story and my client's stories and things in there too um and then from there, I have the Becoming More Me signature programs. So I have group coaching, I have one-on-one -on -one coaching, and things that are really designed to um, give you expert advice that gets results, especially for people who feel really stuck in different places. So I'm always happy to hop on a quick call. And you know, if you mention Janine's name, when you hop on there, you'll get extra bonus coaching too. So that can be really helpful also. But yeah, I mean, from from the free community on up to, you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching, there's all sorts of ways that I can kind of jump in and help you. And I'm always happy to, you know, answer questions. If you have them, email me, Teresa at Teresa Lear Levine, and let me know what I can do to help you. I'll always try to find the right solution that's going to align with what you're looking to do or achieve. Good stuff. Good stuff. And I mean, I know that and for my personal, you know, wealth, health, all of the things you've helped me quite a bit in terms of moving through quite a few blockages. And and like you guys have seen here, you know, it's, it's not a, you get it all fixed. You, you're an evolving person. We, we have things that come up and, and so being able to have the skills to work on what's coming up on the fly can be incredible for your overall health. And then working with Teresa to really kind of move you to the next level of what you're going for in life is a game changer. It's worked for me. You know, I have no doubt that it's going to help you as well. So Teresa, thanks again for chatting with me again today. I always love chatting with you and look forward to more times. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate your support and having me back on the show again. Anytime. You know that. You know that. We'll have more good times in the future here. All right. Oh. That's it for today. Hey, fellow health junkie. Thanks for listening to the Health Fix podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.